welcome to Crusader Kings 2, a game where apparently you can get through three characters in the space of 10 years. So, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I've thought, I've thought about what happened yesterday. You know, when we were murdered horribly as a child and then I decreed humanity is unlovable and mummy, I want them roasted. But now I'm thinking, maybe we'll see how this guy comes out before we commit to that. Maybe that's exactly what they wanted us to be. But if we did, I'm just going to, I'm going to preface it by saying if we did turn evil, it wouldn't be such a bad thing. Oh no. Oh no, it's already starting. <laughs> well, an incredible start. That kid mocked me. I cannot be blamed for punching him in the face and giving him a nosebleed. Well, there we go. I guess my mind's been made up for me. Holy shit, game. You have some incredible comedic timing. What? Oh. That's cool. Okay, so this is a weird mechanic in Conclave, right? Wait, where your trait, where your guardian will have what's called an intervention trait. So our guardian must be patient. Or kind. That's probably it in this situation. So if we were becoming wrathful, our guardian can step in. And if they have a trait that allows us to remove that and turn it into the better option. So wrath becomes patient, for example. She is capable of doing so, but she needs a specific trait to fix it. In this case, I imagine it's kind. I'll check the wiki afterwards. But pretty sure that that's what's happened there. Which is why we've gained patient rather than wrath. Okay. Um... Just going to put that out there. Patient does not necessarily mean a good guy, though. That I'm Palpatine was patient, and he built a station capable of mass genocide. Not saying that we're going to do that, especially with the flag from the last couple of episodes. Oh my god, we became Gagaris as well. Oh, we might be in, in for a good character. Regardless whether he's good or evil, he's going to be good to play. And then we can, you know, Gregarious or Patient aren't necessarily good or evil, like I said. Ambitious, though. I think there's a strong argument that ambitious characters aren't necessarily the nicest guys. Y you know, humility and, and monk-like, all that garbage. You receive a report by the next day to be serviced. Oh, God, I forgot we were spending a fortune on this. Um, The patch of land technically belongs to a local temple. I say that, though, but this kid yesterday, did we not execute multiple people with this kid? I, I swear we did. I guess it doesn't show up on our kill list yet because we're younger than 16. I have no idea. But we did. Oh, we put them by trial by combat. Right, so that wasn't my fault. I didn't kill him and maim him. That was the guy fighting for me. Good work. Um, So, we are doing this as well. I'm kind of debating whether or not this is worth it, to be honest. Because we haven't got the gold ready to develop any resource if we do find any anyway. The patch of land belongs to a local temple. There is a chance they'll see your activities in the land in a positive light. There's a chance. Oh, there's little chance. Right, right, right. Yes, yes, yes. Um, lose 250 piety. Hang on. We could. This could be the start of it. We're an ambitious kid. You know, we've had anger problems, which, you know, appeared out now. But we're still after people's land. We've been searching for land. We gave the order for that. You know, as a six-year-old, we might have read it in a book or so. They've been like, yep, find me some find me some gold. And now we've dedicated... We've literally bankrupted the realm to do this. Now, if we take the negative piety... We can potentially join the cult of the Starry Wisdom, eventually. I don't think it shows up until you're 16. But eventually, that will allow us to do it, because you need no piety to join it. It's actually quite a hard joining requirement. You need to have negative piety. Now, we're not going to be able to get rid of that piety for, I mean, years and years and years, hundreds of years. So I'm thinking, let's take our Master of Ceremonies off of Hunt Subversives, let them thrive a little bit, and let's perform charity instead. Worst case scenario is our Master of Ceremonies pockets the money and then we get to imprison him. So let's put him over in the capital doing that. Still, lowest revolt risk as well. So we can be a bit evil if we feel like that. If the character ends up being a little evil, we can be a little evil and not have to worry about the peasants so much. I remember this from yesterday. We, we did we did have this event. I was going to say I thought we killed someone, but no, our, our Minister of Household actually killed him in, on, on our behalf. Uh, there's a, an old folk tale in this area, something about a magic bus or, or something similar that must not be disturbed. We will send our minister of households to deal with the elder of the local village. We'll deal with him. Intrigue minus five, lose 45 gold. Oh, man. I think for the time being, let's just move on to the next site because we can't afford... I think each, each time you do that, it gives you a small chance of just succeeding. So... I think we'll just move on and roll the chance again huh, later on when we can actually afford it a little bit more. Now, here's the important thing. We're 14. We can actually get married because, of course, Game of Thrones well, is a bit more medieval in that sense that you can get married at a younger age. Um, we can also marry our... I was going to say our kinswoman. Obviously, we're not going to because she's 52. Um, who do we want to marry them? Ourselves. Perfect. Um, oh, that's fine. Did I genuinely just open fine characters instead? Okay, let's try this again. So, I'm looking for anybody with... Any sort of inheritable trait, to be honest. Anybody who's got some redeeming factors, you know. Marriages, highborn marriages would also be kind of appropriate. Um, what have we heard rumors of? Have we heard rumors of this character's mighty wit or this character's fair beauty at the age of three? Up, oh, 
Stop, stop that right now, Chris Hansen. Stop that by T ye of bow me. Uh, let's find, I don't know, I mean, we'll just look for your regular sort of, uh, good genetics, and then we'll roll from there. I don't know how strict we want to be with the marriage system this time around. Oh, okay, she could work. She's a slave, though. Can we buy her? Carl Drogo. Carl Drogo says, this one is not for sale at any price. Ah, oh, well, that's a real shame, because she's really good. There's a woman in a ruin, so obviously if we marry her, we're going to lose a lot of prestige, because she's just a random woman in a ruin somewhere. Um... We can't invite her to court. Let's see if she'll accept an arranged marriage. No. The ruin itself is saying no in that one. That's ridiculous. Um, we could buy a favor from her when we can afford that. There's a couple of other characters that are also have the, have the potential to buy favors from her as well. Let's go for Genius instead. Maybe that's a little more fair. Uh, it's a 19-year-old Genius who's potentially up for coming to our court. Uh, let's go for... No, okay. Let me, let me have a look through and sort of decide what we can do. How if we had a little bit of cash though, huh? Can we take out a loan? Lou, take out a loan from a vassal. Yeah, yeah, We don't have any vassals, besides, obviously, uh, mayors and whatnot. I didn't realize they actually could give us the money. Nice. Okay. That's still not enough to buy a favor, but it does bring us slightly closer. We could be able to potentially bribe this woman. She's a genius, after all. Now, genius has a higher inheritance chance than prodigy. So I'm actually thinking genius might be the safer play when there's so few members of the dynasty. We might, if we stick with seduction focus, family focus, end up with more people with genius than more people with, with prodigy, if that makes sense. So let's get Sililili on board. There we go, thank you. Because we do just want to get numbers out there right now. You know, we're not going to focus on particularly spending a lot of money on, like, a kid's education. We just want to get as many members of our dynasty as possible in case we get into a similar situation like this where we're 14 and our next heir is a 52-year-old woman who has no kids. So we are very much, if this kid dies, that's, that's it. We're basically game over, right? So let's marry her then. She'll do. Arrange marriage. You two fly. Earlier the better as far as I'm concerned. I don't want to wait too long for money to tick up because, of course, we haven't got any money. We've taken the loans that I'm kind of comfortable taking. Let's just get on with the child making. I think similar to the seduction event, uh, event, a wedding feast has a chance of giving you a kid immediately as well. National revolt risk is lowered. Vassal opinion plus 10 is not really relevant, but we lose the last of the 20 gold. Doesn't really matter too much because apparently we were at like 19, yeah, 19.4 gold there. So we are technically in debt, but not really. All of my other vassals will be there. All two of them. We could try revoking these. Hang on, what can we hold as a feudal government in CK2 mod? Uh, <laughs> CK2 mod, yeah, that, that's technically not wrong. In the Game of Thrones, where we can still only hold Castle Fort and Refuge. That's a shame. I was going to say we could tr maybe try revoking these. Our capital it just isn't very good for a feudal ruler. Ah, oh, proud. We became humble because our guardian, I assume, is shy. I, again, I need to look at that. Oh, that's annoying. I guess our dreams of a, uh, a, a, an evil character. See, now it would be bad of me, I think, to turn him into an evil character. Because he's humble, he's patient, he's gregarious. He has all the makings of a nice guy. I'm a devout follower of the gods of Yi-T. Yes, you are. The maiden, the mighty line of the night, the maiden fair of light. Which one gives? This gives fertility, right? I'm going to take this one. Just because my guy just got married. So I feel like it's the most appropriate one to go for. Kind of suits the, suits the, the, the circumstances a little bit as well. And we're having a wedding feast. Um, we can't really afford it. Uh, Danny. Danny, I don't want the wedding feast. I can't, uh, what can we do? Because I also wanted to go on the tour. So we can send our character on a tour of any lands that we feel like, probably like Westeros or Western Essos, Bravos, that area, the free cities. Um, the issue is it costs us a flat 50 gold. So if we spend so much on the wedding feast, fuck it. We don't need to impress these two vassals, do we? Nah, let's not worry about these guys. Uh, nope, don't worry about it. Lose 10 prestige. We'll just let the wedding feast happen for the chance of the... Uh, uh, chance of, uh, immediately of the wife getting pregnant. What do we want to go for? Oh, wow, that's a hard one. Brawny or Rau... Oh, God. Sorry, Brave or... So, Brawny gives Marshal plus two, diplomacy plus one, health plus one, personal combat skill plus 20. Brave gives... Oh, my God. So, Brave gives a load of... So, ignore the opinion. So, that's personal combat skill plus 20, Marshal plus two. So, it gives the same as Brawny. That gives morale defense. That one gives... I mean, the health plus one from Brawny, I think, is unignorable here. They both give vassal opinion. They Do they both give attraction opinion? No, Brawny gives attraction opinion. I think Brawny is better than Brave. Just because it's very hard to lose Brawny, and it's quite easy to lose Brave. You get you, you lead an army on the battlefield, you get that event where he becomes shell-shocked, or gets PTSD, then you lose Brave, right? You can become Craven from it, or you can just end up straight up dying. 
I think we'll go for Brawny, because the only way to really lose Brawny, even becoming malnourished, you know, with that weird fat versus malnourished event they've added in uh, in Holy Fury, even that doesn't get rid of Brawny. So I think we're going to roll with that. And there we go. The feast is winding down. Now only the bedding remains. Fly and see Lee 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 are stripped of all the comments by the revelers who make a bawdy joke along the way. Then they are finally, it's a bit weird, we are 14, bundled into their bed chambers where they are left alone. A fine tradition. Right, so, I great fun and so did everyone else. That was good. The feast went well, despite the fact that I spent next to no gold on it. Cool. So, in theory, that could give us a chance of getting a kid. I've been having these strange feelings for a special someone lately. The strange urges find myself embraced close to another person. The governor's daughter. Oh, we better keep these thoughts to ourselves. I mean, it's a bit late for that. We did just have a wedding feast. My man's brawny. He's dedicated to the maiden of the light, who is apparently of some fertility goddess. Then we go for the carpenter's daughter. Will that give us the... Uh, normally gives a uh, lost all right if you pick that event. Ah, there we go. After weeks of waiting for the right opportunity, I find myself behind the barn alone with the carpenter's daughter. Shall we suggest a secluded cuddle? Again, lost fall. Um, declare my eternal love will give us chase. I think that's a bad idea. I think it's a really bad idea. Let's go for that one. Fertility God and all that. We didn't get it. That's a real shame. That would have helped out a lot, again, given that we are the last male of our dynasty. But hey, not a big deal. Um, March minus 5 and 45 God. We can't afford it right now. I would much... Huh. I would much rather go on our foreign tour. Aegon Targaryen invades. I suppose we could talk about this now, given that the show's never going to do it, huh? Um, given that, A, the show was ended, and, and B, they were never going to do it in the first place. Long live the king. So Aegon... So this is the kind of the character, and spoilers if you haven't seen uh, Game of Thrones Season 8, or, I suppose, being too much into the theories around the books. So this character, Aegon Targaryen, is kind of what Jon Snow became sort of. Um, so Aegon Targaryen in the books is supposedly the child of Rhaegar Targaryen and, uh, Elia Martell. So Oberyn's daughter, who was obviously married to Rhaegar Targaryen. This was supposedly one of the kids that Gregor Clegane killed. Varys smuggled him out of the capital, replaced it with just a random kid he found on the streets, a random peasant woman's baby. And then, uh, it's Illyrio of Pentos, which I don't think is the same Illyrio in the show. It's, it's kind of confusing. But Illyrio and Varys were planning on putting this kid back on the throne because Varys believes that, obviously, the realm is more stable in the hands of a Targaryen, as we saw in se Season 8. They did keep that much going, at least. So that's, that's who this kid is, by the way. Uh, he is actually... I mean, it's debatable about whether the kid is or not in the books, but, I mean, obviously he's High Valyrian in this, so you can't argue with that. We don't care. More importantly, though, we don't give a shit because we're a random guy over in what is Game of Thrones China. Okay, what have we got then? You've begun noticing all the scheming and conflict that surrounds you as you get saddled with more and more responsibilities. Being a lord is not what you hoped it would be, but you have to walk this path, or do you? I have to do my duty. We can gain just, we can gain patient, or we can gain stressed. We can gain diligent, arbitrary, or gluttonous. Ruling means I'm free. Well, this one doesn't make any sense. Slothful is obviously shit. Um, our guy's patient, so I, I feel like it's like... I feel like you can't be patient and brawny and also become slothful, you know? Uh, ambitious. I mean, arbitrary could work. We have been very arbitrary with our with our exploration. I'm, I'm kind of tempted to go for the middle one. Just because there's a higher chance of getting something out of that. It's either this one we get stressed or patient. Right, we've already got... We've already got... Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, stressed or just. We've already got patient. This one could give us... Oh, gluttonous, diligent, all arbitrary. Ah, I don't know. This is a hard choice. This is a hard choice, especially if we want to be an evil boy. We did get diligent. Okay, that's good. And the reason I want a diligent is because if you have patient and diligent, if your guardian has patient and diligent, it gives a bonus to your education. Just, chances are we're going to lose that with all of our temple burning and, and village elder killing and whatever else we're doing with our surveying. Holy shit, this guy is insanely good. As I grow older, I increasingly find that faith is a true fountain of strength. We gained Idolizer too. So in the Game of Thrones mod, Again, I don't know how much they've changed. I need to dive into the code at some stage for future. Learning is the biggest determiner of how good your education is. But we've got diligent, patient. Look at how good this kid is. A lot of this has just been traits randomly flipping into other traits. A, a very little of my own intervention here. So if we truly want to play the character, let's see what type of martial education we got, though. Boom. That's what we're after. Brilliant commander. We're still kind of average, but our traits are insanely good. We got siege leader and light foot, and I imagine we've got a lot of light foot right now, huh? Uh... Oh, actually, we have a lot of heavy infantry. Damn it, that's a bit of a shame then. Heavy infantry leader would have done us a lot better, but either way, that's fine. I mean, Siege Leader alone is obviously fantastic here. All right, let's choose a focus. What do we want to go for first? I think Seduction, based on the fact that, I mean, our guy's dedicated to that fertility goddess and all that. We did a young marriage. We'd, we'd kiss the farmer's daughter on the cheek. This suits him. Plus, it's within the culture. You know, if we, if we get 20 lovers, we can take them as concubines. So... I think there's that cultural influence as well. And I mean, obviously, it's going to help us not get a game over. I think from the meta perspective, that's kind of more important. Let's find ladies within our court. Maybe that maybe that carpenter's daughter or whoever it was is still kicking around. Um, so these are people in our court, huh? Who are they? 
Oh, no, that's just... Right, there we go. Join court for... No, that's not women. Those are, those are not women. Yeah, those were. Okay, I, I don't know who they are. I don't know why we've got a bunch of Carthian women in our court. That's all. Um, very weird. Okay, uh, refugees, maybe. We could try and seduce some of these. There's no reason not to, bearing in mind that we can take 20 lovers. So even though they aren't particularly good, even though they don't have those incredible traits, why not? Like, 20 lovers should be one of the goals we go for. That'd be kind of fun. So the question is, what societies can we join? We can join the Citadel or the Alchemist Guild. Wow, that could be cool. Call the Starry Wisdom. We, all the following must not be true. We actually do have that. We are not kind, honorable, or just. We don't have piety. And we did try and get just. you got to remember, we did roll the dice on getting just there. So, there is a possibility, you know, our guy could more easily join this cult. Now, I'm saying that he's he's kind of actively gone against being just. So, maybe the cult of Star Wisdom could, could uh, call to us a little bit. If you're cynical, hedonistic, cannibal, torture, ruthless, cruel, possessed, or lunatic, I mean, our guy could be going on the path to hedonism right now. For the time being, though, how about the Alchemist Guild? The Citadel is okay, honestly. Forging the Maester's Links, whatever. I, I suppose our guy is Erudite. Erudite, patient, gregarious. Um, I don't really know which one would be better. Alchemist Guild allows us to just make fake valuables, get a bit of money, really. Now, if magic is strong in the world, we can obtain rare powers. That could be very much catapulting ourselves down the path to the cult, the Star of Wisdom. But then again, so could the Citadel. You know, we could study magic in the occult. I think we'll go for the Citadel. Let's, let's go a bit more generic stuff. With our Erudite, maybe he showed a, an interest at a young age in the Citadel society. I'm, I'm happy to go for that one. Right, okay. I've had an eye on a feisty young scullery maid with a huge intellect for some time right now. Uh, let's go for... Actually, I don't know. We go for Marjar. Do we all automatically fall in love with her? Because if we do, she's immediately... Uh, oh, well. I sent Ang Annie Goni a beautiful necklace and covered her room with wildflowers with bent rusty nail and all that stuff. Maybe our guys have bent rusty nail. Yeah, we actually do get her as a lover. Oh. Whoops. Well, we're going to infect most of Yeezy. Let's take her as a concubine. Never mind. Welcome aboard. Literally. My lord and novice, the conclave of the citadel would like to extend your invitation to travel to the high tower. Oh, wow. Okay. So we get to study for Maester's Links. And when we get enough of these Maester's Links, this is a really cool system. When we get enough of these Maester's Links, we can forge, we can, we can pick a specialization. So this guy's obviously got enough links in warfare, so he's become a strategist. Doing this as soon as possible would make sense. We're kind of like an Oberyn style character. He was, you know, obviously trained in warfare combat, went to the citadel, traveled across the world. That's us. Except we're traveling to Westeros, which of course is going to be super exotic for a guy from UT. Let's do it. Let's see what the world... And this is kind of our excuse instead of going on a world tour that we definitely can't afford. What do we want to study then? I feel like Warcraft would make the most sense seeing as our guy is, you know, trained in Warcraft, Erudite, all of that stuff. Let's do it. This should be most illuminating. Let's see if we can uncover some stuff. Plus, that way it'll allow us to expand our borders. I just worry that people might find out a kind of warfare-obsessed descendant of the Bloodstone Emperor. A little bit of a worry. Maybe a little bit of a worry. While carrying out my duties for the Citadel, I've met Master Merwin. Mervin? Master Mervin. Hello, my friend. Uh, what's that? A raven always follows this character. That's kind of cool. Uh, now, nah, we'll, we'll be patient. Oh, I don't know. Do we really care about becoming a rival with a guy who's miles away? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. What's he going to do? Oh, there we go. Nice work. My steward informs me that the concubine Marja is with child. Incredible. Nice work. My time at Citadel has been productive. I quickly gained a thorough understanding of advanced strategy tactics and their application in war. We gained a fruitful relationship. Oh, wow. That's nice. Fellow member of the Citadel. Both did, oh, did we actually? Oh, to gain the opinion. Oh, there we go. Great pupil. Nice. So that's really good. Obviously, becoming friends with the Archmaester of the Citadel as well. That works pretty goddamn well. There, there's, a, there's a board of Archmaesters, I should say. And then, of course, there's the Grand Maester, which is the elected uh, official from the Citadel who sits on the, the throne in King's Landing. It doesn't sit on the throne. It sits on the council for the throne in King's Landing. We're home. Hello. Welcome. Um, we gained a trait there. Oh, because of course we have an artifact. We have the Iron Link now. We will try and go for that. And it says that only two links in a subject allows a Maester to select his specialization. Earn a further third link. I believe we can do that. I remember there was some confusion about this later on. Uh, so I don't think we can get up to this one. We, we can go for this one, but I don't think we can get it to obviously Archmaester as a landed character or something like that. I kind of forget uh, the actual mechanics behind it. Well, look at this. We're already climbing the ranks. Our liege, Cao Fong, the unready, wants to make us his advisor. Advisor I'm happy to do because, of course, they're not going to distract us too much. We're not going to be doing duties for it or risk, run the risk of dying. Right, let's start fabricating some more claims then because this is off to a great start. Um... Minister of Justice. Are people actually like us to some extent? This is quite nice. Let's go for Fabricate Climbs on Tanqui. Did we not have... We didn't have one on Tanqui, did we? Uh, yeah, Fujin. So we just need that one next and then we're fine. Probably not going to be able to afford that at all, to be honest with you. Especially if we Fabricate a Climb as well. Holy shit, she's perfect. I mean, she's not that perfect. A daughter was born to Count 
T Yi Fai of Baomi and Maja named Jia Li. Jia Li T Yi. I'm just going to call her Li T Yi because that works a little bit better. Rolls off the tongue and all that. Oh my god, they want us to go back? We came home for the birth of our daughter, now we're immediately going out again. Okay, we aren't... Oh my god, wait, we are agnetic agnetic. Right, cool. Okay, so we actually should focus on educating this daughter. So we're still going to stick to the wheel thing. I do like that idea, whereby I will note down what ones we've done, what educations we've done. Just keep this, you know, a little bit fresh and interesting. And then we can't use that again for future characters, if that makes sense, until we've cleared the wheel. So if we make this daughter thrift, we'll cross thrift off, and we'll send it next time we can pick any but thrift. Then if we pick humility, we'll cross humility off and pick anything but humility and thrift. We'll keep going until we filled out the wheel. That way, you know, we can still focus on characters a little bit, but it should still go some interesting, unique characters. We wouldn't normally pick, because normally I would just go, oh, I don't know, thrift for every single character. At which point it kind of ruins it. So if we get a son that's genius, for example, might it be worth picking thrift for this daughter? Because she, you know, we've already, we, we kind of wasted it on her, you know? And that way our genius kid is going to miss out on a good education. For her then, um, we could go for like, I mean, etiquette's kind of shitty because you do end up with indolent. Humility is kind of bad because timid can become humble, shark, craven. Um, honestly, the, the only ones that are guaranteed, I mean, thrift and duty are the only good ones. But do we want to waste it on our daughter here? She's our heir, naturally. So if we end up with four more daughters, it would always be her. So I want to give her one of these two good ones. But I do want to save at least one of them for a good son. Let's go with duty. Conscientious is, is generally quite good. Diligent, honorable, temperate. Tempera isn't bad, but isn't the best one there. The other two are obviously incredibly good. And let's educate ourselves if we can. Of course, we're going to be leaving, going back and forward to the to the Maesters of Westeros, those favoured Maesters of Legend that we, we you know we've only heard rumours about over here in Yt to go and learn their secrets of war. There we go. So we'll educate her regardless, and hopefully when we go on regencies, it won't break things there. Let's do it. Let's head out, and then you are yeah. We're still we're still educating her. We're just away from court. Good work. I finally arrived at the Citadel. I've been given apartments befitting an acolyte of noble rank. Warcraft, people and cultures, medicine, or metallurgy. I think we will go for Warcraft 2.0. Learn some real advanced stuff here. This guy's probably quaking in his boots, you know. Foreign Lord fabricating claims on his titles. Disappears off to go and learn the secrets of warfare from the other side of the world. Damn it, there goes our... Any sort of taxes that we might have even had for a second. We've also got to pay back that, um... We've also got to pay back that loan at some stage as well. To, we took for one of our vassals. If he were to die, wouldn't be a big deal. My relations with Prince Kaofong are strained. To uphold the virtue of diligence is vital. Uh, do we want to kneel before him? I don't think that's a good idea. We're ambitious, right? We were ambitious. What happened to it? Oh, when we became humble, we lost ambitious. Oh, that's shitty. Um, oh, man. Show my good deeds or bend the... I guess we would bend the knee. We also gained 20 prestige for that. Yeah, let's take the... I mean, we are patient and humble, so why not? And, of course, we would be annihilated by him if we did go for warfare. Oh, look at this guy. He's impressed another Archmaester there. Nice work. That's the second link already. And there goes the last of our treasury. Okay, nice work. So, we've got claims on Fujin and Tankui. We have 4,700 men because, of course, we are a very good... We are a very good martial ruler there. Is that fully reinforced as well? It is. Right, so let's get our... And you are our best commander. You absolutely are. Let's get you training troops. I should have already done that earlier. Uh, 4,400. We could potentially win it already. What's this guy's marshal? Five. Okay. And then as for his commanders, let's take a look here. So general, uh, 13. We're looking at 13, 14. That's really it. Wow. So his, his troops would not have very good leadership at all. If we focus on inviting some people to court, our troops are already better. But if we focus on inviting some people to court, because I imagine there are more skilled people out there that would be okay for joining us right now. White walkers. Huh? Oh, that could be something. Let's not worry about it. It's not. It's not important. It's not important. It doesn't. It doesn't affect us at all. I would love to see the White Walkers get all the way over to Yt. That would be something. All right. So let's go for highest marshal. Let's go join court. Yes. So we can invite Doc Bodyguard. Yeah, he'll work perfectly. Oh my God. There's a load of good Yeetish generals just kicking around that waiting to be invited to court. Let's bring a load of them on board. Four generals of Yt. Cock, Doc, Jock, and Gok. Come on, Game of Thrones, Vod. We could have, we could have, okay, I, I think that's just a coincidence of nothing else. I hope they haven't said it so all the generals have some sort of Ock, uh, Ock name. Let's go for you, and let's go for, is Farson, he's a direct leader, but this guy's inspiring and heavy infantry. All right, there we go, 19, 19, we could send ourselves with 15 as well, so we'd be on a flank if anything. We're a siege leader anyway, so I certainly wouldn't put our guy on the vanguard, we haven't got that many good traits. All right. Um, I mean, we could swing for this right now. Is there a river crossing between our capital? There's a river crossing between every single province. We can see that just based on the fact there are maps on the river. Okay. Um, here's what I'm thinking, then. Let's wait a little bit. Oh. Cock. 
Cock. No. He's gone immediately, for fuck's sake. Okay, cop my name, cop my nature. Let's bring Jock on board instead. So, let's wait a little bit. Let's wait for our troops to reinforce. Let's wait for, potentially, our master, our master at arms, whatever he's called. Minister of the... Wait, or the, sorry, all of this is a little fucked up because of the cartography thing, so don't worry about the colours there too much. Just focus on the rank. Uh, or this symbol, if, if that's any more help as well. Uh, so, the commandant... Yeah, so you have a chance yearly of... 15% chance yearly of more levy reinforcements. You're also overseeing RAM. You have a chance of doing that as well, right? Um, or, oh, no, no. One of these just gives a flat levy size, does it not? Uh, is it Pacify? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pacify Province gives a flat levy size bonus. Cool. It might not seem like much, but it will be kind of important. Now we can go over to the Citadel once again. This is what I was also going to say. Maybe we can also get our last little bit of, uh, of the... Marshal link and try and get a strategist or something out of that a specialization out of it castles and architecture I think that's kind of appropriate for a siege leader to learn about that. Hopefully it'll be kind of good at it I, I imagine a stat each of those educations is determined by your character's stat as well, right? So a guy with high martial and and high learning might know more about castles and architecture for example I guess that would be more of a stewardship thing though, huh? Perfect. Nailed it. Our guy's so so good. There we go. Winter's coming to an end. Nice work And our character kind of chose this route, you know, he became erudite, humble, patient I think he's very much a learning character. I think learning would have been more of his thing. I did force him down a martial education to some extent. But again, he had a he's, he's great at the military, I guess, theory. Rather than maybe directly leading troops to some extent. So the Glorious Count, you T, want me to make you a commander? Ugh. Decline? I think we're probably not going to do that just in case war is declined. Oh my god, but they want us back again. Do you know how long the journey is between... Oh no, fuck him. Do you know how long the journey is between Yi T and Westeros? So which of these is more useful for a ruler? I'm thinking either coin or law. What are we? What, what is our guy more skilled at? He's more skilled at law. We're going to play... Like I said, we are going to try and play the character to some extent. Lily is pregnant. Very convenient how we leave for the Citadel and she immediately falls Perganonat. Is anyone else a little bit suspicious of this Perganonat? Or is that just me? My liege, Yellow Emperor Chai Kuo tried to arrest priests, Queen of Tradic Town, but failed to apprehend him. Oh, God. Um, saw the futility in rebellion and he's gone to Tradic Town to seek justice. A brave... Move. Oh, I thought we were going to have some sort of big Brown Rebellion, at which point, you know, declaring, not even going independent, but remaining neutral and going to war with this guy, whose troops would have been occupied, would have been really, that would have been like an appropriate time to go for our rebellion there. My god, I managed just bashing out links. He's only 18. And again, like I said, we'll sort of play this like an Oberyn style character, so that when he hits, um, you know, when he's like 20 or whatever else, he might, you know, lose interest in the whole learning based thing. But consider this, this is university for our guy right now. Ah. Oh. My lover accused me of Having, uh, my lover accused me of loving my spouse, silly, more than her. I mean, you are a concubine. You should, you should know your place. Uh, take into account the for some quality. She is absolutely correct. Uh, no. 75% chance of getting lost all. We're on the seduction focus. Boom. Oh, it actually fucking worked. Let's give, uh, and did anyone actually explain this to me? Because I actually don't remember. What does that mean by neglect your responsibilities? I always thought it was where we were writing a book, but obviously not because we're not writing a book. Um... So we can just be a dick to our daughter for some reason. I don't I don't get it. I'll be honest. Because there's also a chance we gain some piety. We obviously don't want piety. Chance of her gaining a stat. She gained some stewage about that. That's kind of nice considering we went for duty there. Okay. Um, We need to be seducing to try and make this family not get wiped out very quick in that. Right. Search so court force filter one. Uh, so she definitely refused it. Let's go for her instead then. Seduce. Allo Issa. She sounds like a Star Wars character. Daughter. D. High. Uh, obviously we are going to remove the high, so she is just DTE. Welcome, DTE. Uh, you are unfruitful and sickly. Oh, good. Good. We've got a, we've got a manky child. Okay. Um, you get, I think we could give her one of the garbage ones, huh? Oh, we can't take that one. We can't take heritage because we are what? Oh, if we're gods of the... Wait, what? I'm in the culture Yeetish. I mean, she does, so I don't know what you're talking about there. Oh, right, heritage is only for if they aren't your culture. I see, right, fair enough. Um, we'll just pick Faith then. We'll get rid of one of the garbage ones on this character because we are sure as hell not going to be hopefully playing as this character. We'll still educate her, but we're not going to take the, the take the reins on that one. We'll make sure someone's at least doing it. Sue, save D, please. Just just any kids at this stage is good, to be honest, because we can at least marry her off to someone randomly. Um, I can't afford this. Don't have much to spare. Surely the local antiquity too. We're still getting some knowledge from it. It's only going to cost a little bit, and our daughter's saved. Nice work. Give us that local scroll. There we go. Nice work. So we technically didn't fail there. So what can we do? We are an acolyte. Level 2. We can write a theorem paper. Brew the milk of the poppy. Make a horoscope. Oh, man. 
So horoscopes allow us to basically focus the education. Roll the dice, essentially, on a character's education, right? So we go to her, make horoscope. Uh, why can't we? Can we just not afford it right now? Uh, oh, we need two bronze links in astronomy. Oh, very clever. And I imagine for that one, we need two bronze links in medicine. Two silver links in medicine. Yeah, okay, because of course the links represent the uh, represent what you're learning. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, so so we're a little bit limited in that regard. That if we're going for just warfare, we won't be able to do some of the other major stuff. It doesn't really suit the character during, doing astrology and brewing up milk of the poppy, whatever. He is a lord at the end of the day. Um, we'll go for coin or maybe language. We'll go for coin right now. Work. Good work, Fighty. So. Before we wrap things up, I do have a question for you guys. What do you think about, like, some sort of roleplay mod? Specifically, build a roleplay mod. So that, uh, you, you know, the system that I'm trying to do here, whereby if we've used... We've now used Faith, so we'll cross off the Faith, and now we can't use Thrift. I could actually add that and automate that in the game, so I wouldn't have to keep track of it. Also put it up on the workshop, along with the... For those of you who saw the Joris Bonson series that we just played, The Perfectly Normal Man... With the education change as well, I could roll that into a single mod, and we can actually stick that up on the workshop to give you more of a... More of a focus on education being obviously integral to the character. Because right now in CK2, as we've discussed, I would normally just pick Thrift or Duty. Sometimes maybe even Struggle for martial characters. And maybe just generally stick to those for every single character. We end up with just the same character all the time. We could put that in for, for future series. I think that could be kind of interesting. So let me know what you think about that. And if you've got any suggestions for it, of course, hit me up on Discord. And we'll uh, we'll come up with a plan for that one together. Because I think it could be a, kind of a nice thing to add into just any future Let's Play we do. Because I think it will give us some uh, some more unique and decent story-related characters. In the meantime, thank you for watching. This episode has been very slow. We've done a lot of university stuff. Tomorrow, we'll really kick things off. And maybe his, maybe his research into the dark arts might influence us down an evil, evil path. I think I've got the full Patreon list now. Again, they're kind of being a bit weird this month. So, thank you. To the following people who, without which this channel would not be possible in the first place. Without these guys, we would all be getting videos once a week. Because that's probably all I could probably manage. Thank you to Aiden W, Anthony Golly, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Croesus, Donald, Fukuno Vasquez, Ghost of Protocol, Gogolas, Harik, Jimbo, Jonah Waters, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Kenny Carter, Michael Muller, Musk Ratful, Nabuskus911, Nathan Flores, Necrofin and Rodin, Richard Clark, Scott, Skaz, Somnus, the Forsaken One, t Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, Vacuous Backers, William Green, and Zazzy7011. Thank you for your support the insane tier levels on Patreon. Thank you for making the channel possible in the first place. Much appreciated out to these guys. Again, if you guys too have any suggestions for the mod, feel free to uh, feel free to throw them at me over in that Patreon Discord. Thank you. Much appreciated. And a thank you as well to Asro, Adam Person, Alex Gomez, Andrew Walsh, Andrew Wilson, Attila, Austin Taylor, Bordoon, Ben Trope, Bestman's Max, Better Valerian, Black Double H, Sedini, Chris, Corey CA, David Van Diepen, Don, Dung 217, Easy to Pronounce Name, Edwin Angovare, Emerald Beam, Exploding Knees, Gaz, Genji Zerka, Grey, Haji Dumar, Icarus, Ice of the Great, Jay Lara, Jacob Wolfie, James Barnes, James Shea, Jason Sushu, Jose, Yoron DeVries, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Plock, Justin Walters, Luana Thomas, Luke Wallace, Mustalt, Monty, Mostly Sampson, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nordstrus, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Pantamu, Panthpearl, Paybet 1 through 7, Peyton Denisar, Rodrigo, Russian Oligarch, Billionaire, Ryan Hooper, Sam Kears, Smirtworm, Smooth, Octopus, Soycrates, SuperNanny089, The Insane Pickle, Volankri, Varagon, Voodoo Mumbo, Will Wade, Wilson Atef, Wolfie, Yorkus, Zach, and Zico 2. Nailed it. Completely didn't fuck anyone's names up, except almost I did. Thank you for your guys' support over at Patreon as well. Let me know if you guys aren't in the Patreon chat or anything like that. I'll make sure we get rules and uh, rules, roles dealt out for this month, because I know the bot can also be a little bit weird in regards to that. Feel free to throw me some names for, for children, for your duchies, for everything else over there too. And I will get those into our our publicly front-facing Patreon rewards list. So you guys can keep track of what you're getting and what whether or not we're on the same page, basically. Just make sure that I haven't missed your names or anything. Because whenever I request these, we get a million names at once. So I want to make sure I don't miss any. Thank you guys for your support. See you guys all tomorrow.